Requirements authoring using Smart Docs. This is a training module for Smart Docs, uh, which is a new module in the model requirements for TFS Suite. In this module, you will learn how to create a Smart Doc, how to author in a Smart Doc, how to create hierarchies, how to use the Smart Editor. We'll talk about multi-user concurrent document usage. We'll look at how to show and hide different fields, how to insert existing work items into a smart doc. We'll look at removing work items from the document, how to use drag and drop to reposition and make work items children to existing work items in the document. We'll look at indentation and out, outdents and we'll generate a smart report. And we'll talk about customization of smart docs. Here is a smart doc. Now smart doc is the first hub after query and backlog. And in smart doc, you can essentially create a document and the document content becomes work items. Now in this particular example of a smart document, we have a cover page, a history section, approval section, introduction, in scope, glossary, and then our requirements. It's shown as a hierarchy. So if I wanted to um, say add a new requirement, let's go down here and say I wanted to add a new requirement to um, requirements documentation. When I click on the plus sign, it gives me what options I have available at that point within the document, and that's configurable. So you can define at every point what work items are allowed in the document. So let's say I want to add a, a user story. So as a BA, I can generate documents in Word format so that I can share with other stakeholders. And in so doing, I've created a child work item against requirement requirements documentation feature, which is in my document. Now I can also insert existing work items so if I wanted to, in fact, before we do that, while this work item is selected, let's go and open up this work item. And you will see that this new work item has become a child of it. Now in the smart document, you can select what link types should be created when you create something as a sub element. So in this configuration, it is child is being created. But if you create a work item that already has a parent, then you can provide an alternate link type that you want it to use. So for example, in this case, I'll go ahead and insert a child work item. So I'll go and say insert uh, user story two in there. So as I insert user story two, you can see the user story two has been inserted right un underneath it. And so you can choose what you want to insert where. Okay, so when you insert, you have the choice of either inserting as a, as a sibling or as a child to a given work item. A given work item, so if I add this child, I could, uh, I could open up this work item and provide my details. Now, this detail area uses a rich text field like this. Um, and this rich text field is, uh, editor is very rich. So you can change the font, you can change the font size, you can do all of these things within the description of the, of the work item, okay? So we can go ahead and insert a special character if we needed to, and so on. What you can also do is insert tables or images. So if you insert a table, 
you can um, go here, you can say, let's give it a heading. So heading one, heading two, some value, some value, and so on and so forth. And as I tap through it, new rows are created. When you save this, the details, the description shows directly in line. So that's one of the advantages of this thing is that you end up having uh, inline content. So you see the inline documentation. Now what you can also do is that if you have a user story as, as in this one, you can also create, in this case, sub stories. So you can have recursive requirements defined. So I can do sub story and that becomes a child sub story to the parent. So if I open this up, you will see that's the parent. So it actually created that as a child. So a story underneath the story, underneath the story, so you can recurse through it. What you can also do is that, say I did not want this at this level. So I could <coughs> outdent it, or I could indent it. So if I outdent it, this becomes 3.2. If I indent it, it goes out or further out. And I can take this and I can drag and drop this into another work item and it becomes a child of that work item. I may take a work item like this one and simply drag and drop it and reposition it. So you reorder it in this case. Now you can work in a couple of modes in a smart document. You can work in a um, um, in the full description view, where it's showing you the title and the description all within the document view. Alternatively, you can hide the description, so you just see the outline. So you may want to just create the outline first and then flesh out the details therein. You may also hide the ID field or show it. This is the work item ID. If you want to remove a, if, you want, if I want to remove this sub story from the document but not delete it, then I can just go ahead and click remove and this will remove the work item from within the document. So that's gone, and, uh, but the work item is still there in, in TFS or VSTS, but uh, the work item itself has is, 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 is been hidden and uh, is no more in the document. Uh, when you have a smart document, you may want to generate a report from it. For example, we've given a, a report called form document. This is a WYSIWYG report on the smart document with all its information in it. And you may choose to apply a different style to it. So for example, I may want to have it shaded. And so then the document is re-rendered, but in the shaded format. So you can see this blue area that has been shaded. And so now you have a shaded sections in the document uh, or whatever format that you want to apply to it. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and you can uh, save this as a Word document. So I could go and generate a Word document. And when you generate a Word document, save it as a Word document, you can apply a template to it. So I may apply a template that has my own header footer. Um, and if you did not have that already listed there, you could have uploaded the template in that window, uh, which is to say in, in this window, you can choose your own template file, which is a DOTX file. And when you open up this document, you will now see the content with the header and the footer in there. So that, that's your, your header setup. And then, of course, all the content is in there as well. If I wanted, I could now go ahead and insert a table of content. Or if I already had a table of content, I could have just refreshed it. And here's my table of content for the information in my document. Let's go ahead and create a brand new document. So when I do a new document, which again, uh, as in every other module within Modern Requirements for TFS, you can organize them in folders. 
but let's go ahead and create this and uh, create a document. Now, in creating a document, there's a few different templates available. The MR, the Agile MR template is the one I'm using right now. Now, well, what's special about that is, so let me just call this the BRD, and I'll create this document. Now, in this document, when you are at the top level, you can create sections. So, you know, when, when you saw things like introduction, or you saw things like in scope, these are section work items. So we've created a work item called sections because they don't really represent requirements per se, but they are just sort of placeholders in the document that you can put information so that the document has contextual data. So that's one of the big differences against uh, with with the backlog view. In the backlog view, everything is in sort of the master collection of work items for your for your requirements. But in here, you can define the context of the document. And so let me then go ahead and say, I've got my uh, user management, which is an epic. And underneath that epic, I've got features or I could have recursively epics as, as, as the template has been designed. So you can design your own template to put your own rules in there. So my feature might be um, user setup. And within user setup as a feature, I may then further define my user story. That as a user, I can register so that I have an account. And likewise, I could create multiple um, user stories here, or I may f even choose to further drill down on that particular user story. Um, if I have a user account in Active, Active Directory, then I can simply enable myself. So that's a sub user story that I'm creating there and so on and so forth. Then you can now flush out all the details you want. Go ahead and then open up the work item. And uh, in the work item, you will then provide all the details. And again, you can use rich content in there. And that rich content then becomes part of the document. The other document template we have that is universally applicable is the basic template. In the basic template, you will see that all the work item types are visible that you have in your process template. So now I could go ahead and I could say, you know what, I sit straightforward want to start with my user story. And if I do shift enter, it will enter the record and allow me to now immediately enter the same work item type. In this case, user story again. Like so. And then within a given user story, I may then choose to identify my tasks. or whatever else you want. So the basic template allows you to enter anything in anywhere. And, uh, but it, it is creating your, your relationships between the work items. So if I had an issue here, then that's that. And if, if I were to then look at the relationships between work items, you will see that the parent has been created appropriately and the child has been created with it as well. One other thing you can do is if you were to use, and here's an interesting one, a blank document with no links. And what this means is, so no link document. And what this means is that this is similar to the basic template, except that when you create an epic, let's say, and within the epic, you go ahead and create, say, features. Now, 
that between these two work items, there is no re relationship created. So it will maintain the structure of the document as you want it, but it is not creating relationships. Right? So that's also available as a configuration to the system. Right? So each of these document types have their own, own set of rules by which it operates. And you can define uh, your own templates and have that available for your teams so that the document has the right information and it will encourage putting in the right information at the right place. Just to be clear, when you double click on a work item, you see the smart editor show up. If you click on the open icon, then the traditional, the, the, the TFS work item editor shows up as in this. From a smart document, you can also initiate a review where it will take all the work items in the document and you can now send it off to others for feedback or comments. And you can also create a baseline from the work items in the document. So you can label it. And then when you look at the baseline uh, training video, you will see how you can compare different baselines and see how things have changed and so on. So folks, that is the, uh, the Smart Docs module that uh, really provides you with a document-like interface where multiple people can work on the same document at once. And then you can save it as Word uh, and so on and so forth. So, and, and, and the, in fact, one really important point to make here is that it brings together work items in whatever way you so choose to bring it together. Um, so it, it does not have the constraints or many of the constraints that the backlog view has. So here you can pro provide contextual data and then the requirements that you choose to have in there. So that's a, that's a tutorial on Smart Docs. You folks have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.